Hello, very quick one because I found the footage, the one that I'd lost the other day. Still waiting on my fasteners which are still with customs according to Royal Mail. Whether or not I believe it and whether or not I'll ever see them I'm starting to doubt. Um, frame will be here tomorrow by one o'clock according to a spin scent. Should be here as long as Royal Mail hold up their end. I'll be like a kid at Christmas. Anyway, like I say, quick one for the found footage and something else I recorded about PSUs because I had a thought about them yesterday. Um, yeah, I'll speak to you next time when I've got a frame. More deliveries today. I'm really getting to know the post lady very well. Um, nothing really exciting, you know, a bit of the reverse Bowden tube, the three mil inside diameter, the cloth tape for winding your bits in. We do have some micro switches, which I'm going to solder in later. Um, yeah, and various bits and pieces. I actually bought the flat ribbon cable and the bit. So rather than buying set length ribbon cables to extend my um, from the controller to the screen, I'm just going to make them to the exact length they need um, because that way they're neater. Uh, self tappers. I'm still waiting for the main screws. They're shock horror. Sat in customs. Um, what I also got, as well as another bed, because it took me two weeks to completely scratch up the one on my Ender 3, so I bought a spare for this. I also bought this ledge strip, which I think I showed you last time. Now, I did just make a bit of a mistake. Excuse the fan noise from this clunky old power supply. Because that is the LED strip turned low. I plugged it in and looked directly at it as it came on at full brightness which as you can see, is a little bit blinding. Anyway, uh, hopefully more deliveries at some point next week and you, you never know, there may be a, uh, a bed turning up at some point, but you know, I'm not holding my breath. Wired the wires onto my first micro switch, put it in and started putting this together with some of the screws that I've got laying around the place because who hasn't got socket headed screws laying around the place? It looks like it wants to come out of this little slot just in here. I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but there's a small slot just in there. Let me try and get some light on the subject. There we go. Looks like they should come out of this little slot here, but I think this is where your rails are going to sit and it's just going to get mangled and be horrible. So instead, I'm thinking they root out of here instead, just inside there and come backwards as it were, because this is where your probe is going to sit. Um, he hasn't arrived yet from China and I've actually got two of them on the way because I bought a normally open instead of a normally closed. And as somebody said, if something goes wrong, all that's going to happen is he's going to drive himself into the bed and try and keep going. Whereas at least a normally closed, if something goes wrong, he thinks he's on the bed, has a panic and stops. But yeah, they come out there and if you look, there's a little, again, down to the brilliant engineering of the guys, there's a little channel here for your cables. So you come down there and it'll wire up there. Your probe will sit in nicely next to him and keep those wires pinned there. And then I'm assuming they come out of here out of this little side groove. Your probe wire comes out of here and comes along the top there. And yeah, it's all it's all brilliantly designed. I'm very much liking it. I'm probably going to try and stick the uh, afterburner on this just to kind of get a feel for how it all looks. But um, I'll fill you in if I do that. Just a small thing while I remember it. Excuse the printer noise, I'd forgotten how loud PLA fans are. Just because it says 24 volts on your power supply, same with any power supply, a lot of them will have this little pin just out of shot down here is a little white plastic screw. That is your adjustment screw. So what I'm gonna do now is before I plug anything sensitive in this, it's gonna go bang, is hook up my multimeter to it. Uh, make sure it's on DC mode. Turn on the power supply, which is actually the first time it's been turned on since it landed from America. Um, be very, very careful doing this. These pins down here, where can you see there? These pins down here are 240 volts at the minute. If you touch them, you're going to know about it. You're going to trip your house and you'll probably end up in hospital. So there we go, down to 24 volts with that little adjustment of that plastic there. Now I'm going to turn it off, but also leave it discharging. Because 
up at this side up here, just out of shot, are some very, very big capacitors that are going to take a while to drain. And you can still see the power's turned off, hence all the lights and fans went off. He's still kicking out 24 volts. That's because he's got no load on him to discharge it. There we go. And the voltage has just, just started to collapse. But there's still power kicking around in these. And partially, that's because this is an LRS. If you try the same thing with the PCF versions, or PFCs, I can never remember which way around, uh, the ones that you'd buy for consumer use, generally you turn them off, that goes to zero. Boom, like that. And you can see it, especially if you're running uh, LED lights. So when I run LED lights off of, say, a meanwhile LRS power supply, when I cut the power, the lights don't go off immediately. They will dim slowly. You do it with the PFC, PCFs. Um, I, back in episode one, I linked a, a handy article that somebody had sent me about the um, the differences in the regulations. Those turns off instantly. Uh, just a quick one, like I say. Um, I should probably go back to work now because it's almost one o'clock.